Well, if you or somebody that you love is suffering from a disease like Alzheimer's or Parkinson's or muscular dystrophy, one of those brain type diseases, uh, you'll be aware how difficult they are to treat. Well, there appears to have been something of a, a major breakthrough that could down the line uh, lead to much more effective medicines for these particular diseases uh, being brought into production. It's to do with a thing called the blood-brain barrier and ways of getting across it. What does that mean? Well, let's go now to a resident pharmacist, Dara Conley, to find out more about this. Dara, you're welcome back to the programme. Thanks, Ian. Good evening. So, Dara, the, the, the blood-brain barrier, first of all, what is that? It's very rare, Ian, that you come across somebody getting an infection in their brain. Mm-hmm. And it's also very, very rare that a baby being carried by its mother gets an infection inside the womb. Mm-hmm. There's a very effective filter going on. And we spoke about filters in the kidney last week. There's a very effective filter there and it's called the blood-brain barrier. And it's very hard to get proteins and things across that barrier that are going to cause harm. Yeah. The difficulty with that is, is that as you go to try and treat problems and diseases of the brain it's very hard to get the drugs in there so Mm. that's why this is exciting Mm. because I like to use the analogies Ian of what have you got around the house to try and explain it so you know your coaxial cable that goes into the back of the television as you open that up there's one copper wire going through it then there's a bit of plastic and then it's got wrapped around that loads of Mm crisscrossed other copper wires they're in a way like a filter they stop the other, the, the other stop, they stop the signals going through to that so you can get a proper conduction. Your brain, for all intents and purposes, is exactly like that. Okay. So that's how the message gets from one end to the other to do something. Yeah. In your brain, you have your synapses and that's how it, the message gets conducted. Unfortunately, in things like Alzheimer's and in MS and other ones like that, is the message doesn't carry correctly down the line. Yeah. So that's why you end up with the degenerative problems that are there with it. The difficulty in treating those is that you have to get past the blood-brain barrier and then you have to get into, literally, the coaxial okay. cable. Okay, so the blood-brain barrier, is, they're like the guards at the gate. Correct. They, they either will allow you through if you, if you kind of tick certain boxes or they won't if you don't. Absolutely. That's, okay. That's the perfect way to look at it. It's also like we know with our own immune system when we mm. take care of viruses and bacteria and differentiate those between things that we have that are, are of our own making. Mm. What's exciting about this research, Ian, is it's a thing called an exosome. And for all intents and purposes, if we were down now at the RSC yeah. and there's a match against Finn Harps so we have on our jerseys for, or Waterford jerseys on we can go into the home crowd if we have our Finn Harps jerseys on we go into the away end what you have here is literally like putting on a Waterford United jersey onto a drug so that it can get near to where we want it to work and that's what an exosome yeah. is and that's why it's really really interesting and clever that we can now find a way of getting the drugs to that place that we want them to work yeah. That then means that you can start to see what exactly you can do at that level to help to cure things like MS Mm. and other brain disorders that are there. It'll work outside the brain as well because as you can think of those conductions of impulses along nerves goes right from the tip of your toes all the way back up to the top of your head. So it's exciting stuff and, you know, fair play to them for figuring this one out. So so effectively what it is, is, is it's a type of a coat. It's a type of a a disguise that they wrap around something so that it fools the guards at the gate to take on it. These are okay, let them through, and then when they get in, they take off the coat and they do their job. This is a big advance in pharmacy. It's a big advance in medicine. The first ones, really, that kind of caught the attention was about 20 years ago when I was a student. It was the time of the, uh, it was the, time of the, the, the first invasion in, in, invasion in Iraq. Mm. And the whole thing was, it was the Lockheed, it was the stealth bomber. Yeah. So all of these things became known as stealth because they get underneath the radar because they've got a coating on them or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So there's lots of new things now that we see coming through. Unfortunately, it can take 20 years before this kind of thing really takes off. But I would suggest that the, what we will see happening with this will happen an awful lot quicker. Yeah. It's all about bundling up these tiny little medicines in these lovely coats and then get them to where we want okay. them to work. A very uh, quick final thing, Dara. Last week when you were talking, we were talking about, about, about urine, about we and the various t- ways that it has been used, whatever. But there is a, we just read during the week that there's a, a project getting underway where they're going to be testing the, at wastewater treatment plants the level of drug abuse in a society simply by what's going into the wastewater, taking a sample of that, and then they can tell what waste society is, is, is on drugs. Yeah, it can, it can be done. And the other thing that you can test as well within a society like that are how many women are using synthetic uh, estrogens and progestogens yeah, yeah. Within, to regulate their own cycles as well, because that goes out in we too. 
there would be a small question mark over that as well is that when you go back through the bigger filter process other yeah. than your own kidneys when we actually regenerate the water and you drink water from the tap think about it what's in it a topic for another day I another think. day our Thanks resident pharmacist Derek Connolly takes a million for that